Hey. Uh, horses for courses. You know this phrase, horses for courses, right? You know the phrase horses for courses? You know what it, yeah, you know what it means, don't you? When a certain thing is particularly good at a certain job, a horse for a course. Now, I used to think it was a very similar phrase. It sounds pretty much the same, and I think you'll find it means pretty much the same thing. I thought it was horses fuck horses. <laughs> you can see I was confused, can't you? Horses for courses, horses for courses, horses for courses, horses for courses, horses for courses. Which one did I say? I don't even know, mate. <laughs> the reason I got found out is because one day someone said to me, oh, it's a classic case of horses for courses. And I went, yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> And when they got big dicks, Nan. <laughs> just, just me on that one then. Um, so maybe you guys can relate to this a little bit more. Has anyone here got a surname? <laughs> no, no, because we didn't always have the surnames, did we? Alex, you're the history student. You back me up on this. We didn't always have surnames. Back in the olden days, the population was a lot smaller. Uh, we just got by with the first names. But then the population grew and grew until it got to a point where people were like, I'm sorry, which Steve? There's too many Steves. So they started giving out surnames for just arbitrary reasons, really. Like, uh, if you were the baker in your village, you got the surname Baker. Uh, you got the surname Brown. <laughs> just if you had brown hair, really, and didn't really contribute in any way to the running of the village. Nothing really worth mentioning about you at all. Um, you, madam, have you got a surname? Cardwell. Cardwell. Ooh, do you know what that means? Oh, good, because I hadn't done enough research uh, <laughs> for this bit. Do you, what, what does it mean, sorry, Ms. Cardwell? You don't know, then. It's something to do with <laughs> Cardwell. You sure it wasn't like a, a greetings card manufacturer, a particularly good one, or just someone who left cards to a well, which is insane. Um, but all this kind of makes me wonder what my ancestor, uh, Steve Shakeshaft, What was, he, what was he doing? What was he, what was he up to on the when, the... when the census man came around giving out the surnames, what was... Because we like, yeah, you old mad Steve leaving cards to a well, Steve Cardwell, something like that. Um, oh, uh, you over there making hats, Steve Milliner. Hmm. Yeah, I have done a bit of research, actually. And, uh, oh, hoity-toity over there using cutlery to eat his soup, Steve Witherspoon. I made that one up, if I'm honest. Uh, knock, knock. Oh, Steve Shakeshaft in there. <laughs> Working from home. And he's, hold on. It's my day off. It's not my job. I mean, I'm good at it. But I'm not getting paid. Sorry, mate. Um, we don't know, we don't know. That was, a, that was a very poor reconstruction of what might have happened on the day. Sorry. Is it, yeah. Uh, that, but, there might have been another bloke in there. He might have been, you know, getting a bit of money for it. It's the oldest profession, of course. And if that was the case, then thank you very much, Mr. Census Man. Because on balance, getting through school being James Shakeshaft is a lot easier than if I'd been little Jimmy Rentboy. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Uh, what else can I tell you about me? Um, another thing that makes basic social interaction difficult, apart from this ridiculous surname, is I think I can pronounce the comma when I really can't. And now that gets me in Tesco's uh, when they ask, do you have a club card? Because on paper, my response is bang on, right? It'd be like, Tesco cashier, do you have a club card? Question mark. Me, I don't, comma, no. That's a perfectly dignified sentence. <laughs> Until you come through to say it out loud. They go, do you have a club card? And I go, I don't know. And it says more about them than it does me. And all that time, not one of them has asked, do you want to check? <laughs> Just have a look in your wallet, mate. It's where they usually keep them. But yeah, that's all fun and games when it's Tesco's and it's a question about a club card. But when you're in an airport and the question is, do you have any drugs on your person? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> do you or don't you? I don't know. Listen, son. Don't fuck me about. Do you want to be taken into a little office by a 43-year-old customs official with a short temper and fat fingers? <laughs> and have him rummage around in your smuggler's bum bag? In your hot, rotten pocket? Do you want that? 
I don't know. Has only one way to find out, son. All right, uh, well, you guys have been lovely, so I'm going to leave you with a quick tip. Um, I don't know if you like karaoke as much as I do. I do, you don't, because I fucking love karaoke. But if you did like... If you did like it a little bit, here's a little tip. When it comes to the end of the night and they come in and go, can you just wrap it up now, please? Go, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, I'm just going to sing Lionel Richie all night long. And they go, yeah, that's fine. Then you've got them. <laughs> got them on a technicality, you don't have to stop. You are limited to the back catalogue of Lionel Richie. Hello. <laughs> One of the other songs. Thank you very much. I've been James Shakespeare. Get off your MC. James Shakespeare. <laughs> doing his very first open spot here at the Manchester Comedy Store. Did he do well? Yeah. I'm sure we'll see him in the future.